All right, um, this is a math lesson again on determin determining probabilities and outcomes of independent events. This is going to help you with um, section uh, 7.3 again in the workbook. And uh, I'm going to show you that. Um, I'll show you that uh, maybe on my screen in a minute. It'll also help you with 11.2, the worksheet that is part of this lesson. Um, again, you can also go to IXL today. IXL for grades six, seven, and eight now has the supplemental learning material started off for data analysis and probability. Those are ones that you can spend your time on to help as well. So let's take a look at the, um, the uh, lesson for today. We're gonna go through it quickly because uh, I'm trying this out. This is a new way of recording and hopefully we'll be able to get this up to you guys so that you'll have a little bit more to go off of. And I know that this has been a little bit of a tough time for you all, but uh, just do the best you can. Um, try to share your computer space with your parents and then work on paper as much as you can. So anyways, we're gonna try, try one more time here. So first of all, if we think about determining probabilities, probability itself is the probability of, um, it's kind of like a ratio. So when we just finished fractions, this should look familiar to you. So probability is the number of favorable outcomes divided by or over the total, total number of possible outcomes. And it's gotta be total, otherwise um, you won't have the right fraction. So you can think of total as being the uh, number of possibilities and probability is what probably will happen if we go with the numbers. So that's what probability is. Um, if you wanna talk about the notation I've been using is P A, something like that. And what that means is, what is the probability of A, and B happening. And we took a look at a few different types of things that are common to use. We've been talking about spinners and when we spin the spinner, what do we get? So if we put a oops, spinner down here, this one has three different options. Some spinners have uh, five different options, things like that. If we were talking about a coin flip, we would flip a coin. This is, uh, you know, my coin here. It's a penny. You don't see these very often, but there's only two options, heads, as it landed there, or tails. So um, if we wanted to use tree diagrams for this, we could say, again, with an example, if we had a penny and a three, um, sided or sectioned spinner, kind of looking like this. And let's say on the spinner, it had uh, yellow, green, and red. And I wanted to know what's the probability of heads, probability of heads and red. I could do a tree diagram for this. I could do a chart because there's only two possibilities um, or two different events. If there's more than two events, you can't do a chart, but you have to use a tree diagram for uh, three or more um, different independent events. So uh, we could do this with looking at it like so. So we have heads and we have tails. Those are the only two options on the, the coin flip. And because there's three different possibilities, this is a pretty simple one. We could get yellow, we could get green, we could get red. And again, that repeats itself. So uh, there's a term that's being used as the sample space, the sample space is just heads yellow, heads green, heads red. 
tails yellow, tails green, and tails red. Hopefully you can make that out on your page. So uh, to answer our question then, the one we're concerned about is heads in red. If we take heads in red, it's that probability in the tree. So the probability is one out of six total possibilities, six total possible outcomes. So I know some of you have been struggling a little bit with that. I'm trying to um, uh, help you figure those things out. And that's the way we deal with those. Um, just be careful about the terminology. If it's asking for the total number of outcomes, well, the total number of outcomes are here. That's six. If a question's asking for the actual probability, we need to put that in the form of a fraction. And like we just did earlier this year, you know that a lot of fractions can be turned to um, decimals. They can be turned to uh, percentages as well. So keep in mind how to do that from previous lessons, and you can use IXL for sure. So this is another example of how you can tackle uh, section uh, 11 point, uh, or sorry, worksheet 11.2, worksheet 11.3, as well as uh, section 7.2 and 7.4 in the workbook that I put in your packages. This guy here. Okay, so that's what I'd expect you guys to uh, finish up on. Do the best you can with it and please start submitting those assignments. I know I've gotten a few of them in. When you give an assignment back to me, I'll send you out the answer key. All right, thanks a lot and uh, try to have a good day.